Home after a couple yeah, weeks on the road? Absolutely. Um, you know, good two good weeks for us on the road. Uh, I like how we're playing now. We just got to establish that back at home. And we've uh, two series to go for our break before we get a, a bye. So we got to keep our foot on the pedal. Looking at Justin over the weekend, uh, just to see me, he was on point the whole time. And, you yep. know, Big Ten uh, first star of the week. Uh, what did you notice out from him the way he was dialed in? I thought both goalies were dialed in. You know, like both of them were dialed in. Um, you know, we did, uh, Justin was tested more on Friday night. Their guy was tested more on Saturday. It was a great battle. Um, great performances by both those guys. What have you seen him in the stretch? He's got a six one 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 record in the past eight. What what have I? What have what I? What do you see? I mean, what, what do you see in his play? What's, what's anything different? Any nothing like. He has not changed from the moment he's went in the net. And I can't, how many times have I said that? And you all, I mean, it is the most crazy story still in my coaching career. How, what a dumb coach I was for not putting him in before. Because it is crazy. He's just a good goalie. And he's just good every day. He seemed to get into a lot of scramble situations at times. Uh, did he feel, you feel comfortable when he was in that? When oh, yeah. That yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we just don't like shootouts, but, <laughs> but we're we're comfortable in him in any situation, and uh, and he's putting a push on right now. What's his best attribute as goalie? Other just than his calm. Demeanor, other than his calmness, we always talk about him being so calm and cool. That is one of the great attributes for great goalies. They don't get too high. They don't get too low. They they read the play. He he, he he's just he's got a calmness to him. Uh, you know. One of the great goalie coaches, Mitch Korn, told me a long time ago, 90% of all goals are scored because the goalie moves to make the hole for it to go in. And he don't move. And he, he takes a lot of space away. Is that something you missed when you weren't thinking about playing him and you had Jack and? I, well, we had good go we've, yeah. we've had good goaltending you know, ever since I've been here. I, I, that's not good. Uh, well, Jack's a pretty good goalie. You know, Robson is a pretty good goalie, so we've been awful fortunate. To, um, awful fortunate. You talked after Saturday's game about how you thought that was one of the best games you've seen the Gophers play in your time here. Just yep. top to bottom, it seemed like your third and fourth lines were as involved as anybody else. How, how much confidence are you seeing building among that group? Uh, well, the, it's, a, it's a huge benefit right now that we, we're, we're playing four lines strong. Um, and you can get an attack going. So, that, you know, in, a, in a, that snapshot, the second half, you know, it's amazing too, we got healthy. Um, uh, and and not only that, they get in shape, they get a routine going with with your roster. Uh, it's got a good feel to it. It's over, we gotta make sure, I'm just, our, our, I told our guys, the most important game of our, of our of our team is the next time we put on our jersey. And that's going to be what we go with the rest of the year. I think you said in your post game, Saturday's game was one of the best you've seen yep. since you've been here. Just what, what made it? Just top to bottom throughout the whole lineup. It's just that the, they, you know, they'd won a game Friday, you know, it, it, it was an overtime. Uh, and you knew we were going to get a strong push from, from Wisconsin. And we started the push right from the get go. And then they they had a push, and then we got it back, and we kind of kept. We just got stronger as the weekend went, and even like the three on three, I I pretty much almost got everybody in because everybody deserved to play. There, I, I think we ran out of time. Uh, I would have kept playing more, and because you know sometimes as I told I go I, you know coaches calls balls and strikes sometimes, and if you're going we'll play you, and we had everybody going. Is it impressive that your team was able to ignore all the noise? Throughout the game Saturday, and you can't really hear it down on the ice. Well, the, the noise like officiating and good goaltending and things like that that they can't control, and they kept playing the way you want them to play. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we you know after we scored right away after the one, um, 
and our guys just kept playing. Yeah, it was it was great. It was you, know, you wish every game were like that. It's not always that way, but is, is this this time of year? Is it tough to keep your team from looking ahead a little bit, peeking ahead to say March when all the fun happens? <sighs> I'll tell you if we take our foot off the pedal, you know, right now I can just go our last, you know, our, our last handful of, you know, really since second half, we're trending in a great way and you just want that to continue. And, and you know, the logic, te- you know, it happens. I think all teams go through ebbs and flows. So, so one of these games, our power play is going to have to, and we only had two power plays on the weekend. So, but our power play is going to have to answer, you know, Justin's going to have to steal one. You know, there's a multitude of ways that, that you, you fight through a season. I, I wish I could tell you every game your team plays its best. We're playing awful well, but some nights you need some breaks too. And we're just one weekend at a time. When you're in that 1-1 one, one deadlock, putting high volumes of shots on the goaltender, what can you change as a coach to kind of break that deadlock? Um, we were doing everything to do it, so there was nothing in a game like that. Uh, you know, we were getting our chances, and um, our guys were dialed in, so we just we just kept rolling the lines. What are you, what are you Is, seeing from Penn State? Um, they're like they're, they got a young roster, and they got some young guys that you can see are are, are real offensive, and they're 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 feeling it. They're 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 dangerous. Um, um, you know they're they're explosive offensively. Um, we've got to be disciplined and not let you know let them get on the power play. You know the the the, the young Fink boy is is having a terrific freshman year. He's got six power play goals in league play, um, and you know and they like to create chaos, and we have to be the anti of chaos in in a series like this. In your discipline, I mean, you're one of the least penalized teams in college hockey. Just how much easier does that make it for a coach when you're not having to put four guys out there? Oh, well, it's you know, it might, it's been a theory I've had for a long time. That, like college hockey is just a, it's a series of playoffs. Every weekend's a playoff series, and you have to win the playoff series. Uh, and winning the special teams battle is one of the most important things you can do. And being disciplined and trying to win, you know, maybe you get one more power play than the other team, and um, it, it seemed to work for work, work for us. Thanks, so. All right, thank you.
Hottest team in hockey. Ah, <laughs> hope so. How much nicer is it to be home after after two weeks in pretty hostile places? Yeah, uh, that's kind of. I was talking to my mom today, and I was just telling her we we're all really excited to be back and. You know, I, th I think I saw something about a sellout here this weekend, so we're excited to get back in front of our fans, and yeah, I think we're just excited to be back in Mariucci. Here you've got 10,000 fans mostly cheering for you. There you had 15 mostly wanting you to fail. Do you notice that at all? Or? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's I, personally, I love it. I think it's fun when they're rooting against you. It kind of uh, gets you going. It gets the fire in your belly a little bit, so it's easier to get up for a game like that. And when you, and when you can quiet them like Friday night. Yeah, it's, uh, it makes it a little more fun, yeah, for sure. That series seemed like a playoff series. Absolutely, yeah. I was talking to some some of the boys, and they agreed. And, yeah, we were just – I mean, that was probably the most fun series I've had playing this year. And, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to playoffs. Is it a situation now? You're, you're still in February, and the fun stuff is in March. I mean, you kind of have to keep going up here and, you know, look at Penn State first. And that. Absolutely, yeah. Um, we're just worried about our next game, so – yeah, um, but yeah, that definitely fired us up for what's coming. But yeah, we definitely got to stay grounded here and worry about what's what's up this weekend. What were your thoughts on uh, Justin's performance over the weekend, oh. especially Friday? Yeah, he was lights out both nights. So good. Um, it's always nice when you got a guy like that back there where you know you're you're in every game because of him. So uh, just excited to see that for him, and definitely excited for all of us knowing we got him back there. He's, he's, he's so technically sound that uh, he had to get in a lot of scramble type situations mm -hmm. too. Uh, what did you see out of that? I mean, did that surprise you at all? No, nothing surprised me with him. He's so good. Uh, he just always amazes me, but I'm never surprised by it because I just know how good he is. It's a couple you know, months ago now, but what did you learn from the trip to Penn State about what this weekend might be like? Yeah, um, I think they're a lot more structured this year than uh, last year, but I think if we can uh, – just kind of play how we've been playing and be really sound defensively. I think uh, we'll have a lot of success this weekend, but know that they can capitalize on chances, so we got to be tight defensively this weekend. Think in that line kind of the key to be aware when they're on the ice? I think so, yeah. I think I don't look at points too much, but I'm pretty sure they're doing pretty well this year. So, yeah, just be aware when they're out there. Yeah. Bob talked about how nice it has been to have you know all four lines kind of clicking to the point where he's trying to play everybody even in the three on three. Can you just talk about the depth and, and how how that works? Yeah, it's uh, it's a good feeling when you know that whoever's going has uh, got a chance to do something good out there. So I think it just gives everyone confidence knowing that we got all four lines going, and no matter who goes, we're going to have success. What's uh... Working for Brody, you know, you look at his numbers. Yeah. You, say you don't look at numbers, but his are pretty impressive if you glance at him. Yeah, um, I mean, he's just super good. So I think I, I mentioned earlier, I got a question about him, and I think it's just that next step and that confidence that he has and he's playing with right now. And you can just see it, like, just on the bench and on the, when he's out there and just talking to him. He's he's pretty special, and I'm just super happy he's buzzing this year. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.
Hello, everybody. Want to support them a bit? Yeah. Oh. Don't get to listen to Mike. Sunday night basketball last night. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Just while you guys were practicing, Penn State got four shots on goal. Just how do you prepare for, for that offense that they bring? Ah, uh, that's a good one. <laughs> well, we know they like to shoot the puck a lot, so um, I guess it's on closer to be ready for them. Can't stop everyone, but yeah. What, what did you learn from the two games you played out there earlier this year? Um, I mean, they like to play fast. They like to push the pace a little bit. Um, we watch film on them. Uh, we know how they play, how they, what their tendencies are, and um, you know, played like we did against Michigan State or against Wisconsin this past weekend. Um, I think we're going to do just fine against them coming up. What were your thoughts on Justin's play this, this past weekend, and, and including the stretch where he's six one and one? I mean, it's pretty incredible what he can do back there. Um, it's nothing new from what I've seen in the four years that I've been with him. Um, he makes those kind of saves every day in practice, and then when he makes them in the game, um, just give him a nice tap on the pad. And I think he, he knows that he can make the save, and we know it. And um, it's nothing new for me, but it's pretty remarkable what he, what he does back there for us. What, what type of confidence does that bring when you're in a tight game like uh, you were with Wisconsin both nights when their goal, goalies do it very well, too, uh, to have Justin back there? Uh, I mean, it, it really helps us out. You know, if uh, something breaks down and he makes a big save like that, it's um, it really instills in our head that we know he can make a save like that and um, allows us to just keep pushing forward with our game plan and how we play. And um, it's uh, it really helps having a guy back there that you can trust and know what he's doing every every second of the game. Your coach has gone with six defense, but an extra forward the last couple of games. Just w what kind of a difference does that make being part of the D court when there when you know there's only six of you and there's not that extra that extra one back there? Oh, yeah. Uh, for for us, really, it it really doesn't make a difference if we have seven or six. Um, I think the main difference is in warmups. We have to realize that we don't have that extra guy out there. Um, but I mean, back there, whether we have seven or we have six, um, our mindset's the same. We uh, every time we get put out there on the ice, doesn't matter who it is, we we know what we have to do and um, we do our job correctly. So uh, nothing changes. Go back to Justin there. Uh, What's he like off the ice? I mean, he, he seems pretty calm and everything on the ice. Is he? Uh, does his personality flow off it? No, he is. He's very calm, cool, collected. He's uh, well spoken. I mean, he's he's one of a kind. I'll tell you that. He's uh, he's a really good guy and um, probably one of my best friends on the team. So uh, he's he's something else. We like to call him the old man. He's uh, he's one of those guys that likes to drink his coffee at the sunrise in the morning. <laughs> Read the newspaper, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? What development, I guess, this later in the season, have you noticed from the returning players on the roster, like Perth and Plant? Um, I mean, we've made some big strides, you know, this second half, uh, especially with that sophomore group. Um, you know, we got a lot of them, but uh, you can really see how they're filling into their roles and how they're playing. And um, got a lot of guys playing good hockey right now. And um, it's really nice seeing our team come together as one one big family and one big team and um, you know moving down the road cutting into playoffs and whatnot it's it's a good thing to be playing good hockey now rather than uh, play it early and forget about it sure. okay. a lot of ups and downs this this season uh, both seasons on the horizon just where's your confidence at with this squad um you know we're we're coming off two big weekends um looking to keep moving forward and i think our confidence is uh it's going through the roof right now, and um, we just got to stay level-headed and not get too too high on anything right now. And um, we just got to keep pushing forward one game at a time. You're used to playing in front of packed barns, especially here at home. You know, 10,000 is pretty routine they, when they all want you to do well. How different is it when you're in a place with 15,000 fans all rooting for you to fail when you go behind the net <laughs> to pick up a puck and know if I cough this up, you know, it's yeah, going to be bad. Yeah, something bad's going to happen. Um, <laughs> You know, it, it really doesn't make that big of a difference um, when you're playing. Uh, I, it might sound weird, but it's kind of it's kind of fun being the villain when you go there and you got 15,000 fans that hate you. Um, it kind of gives you that extra motivation to you know do something do something well and you know put one in the back of the net on them. Um, and it's the same thing when we play here in front of our fans. You know, we want to put one in and have our have our uh, rank go crazy, but. Um, 
there's it. <laughs> something different when you go to the call center and you got all those people yelling at you and um, they want you to mess up, but uh, I've been playing the sport for 24 years now, 23, and um, I'm pretty confident in the abilities that I've been given. And um, I think my teammates are confident that I won't make that mistake, and I have trust in them as well. You noticed that big white wall on Friday right behind Justin there? <laughs> oh, yeah. We noticed it. We noticed the signs. We get them all. Uh, all you can do is laugh. Just have fun with it. And I know they're having fun, too. And the way that the Saturday game finished with a disallowed goal after you had won Friday, do uh, you still think of that as a sweep in a way? Um, no, not really. Um, you know, we lost on Saturday. Um, whether the refs made that call or if they didn't, I mean, we, we still lost. And um, I think we're going to take that into account this coming weekend and um, just got to play a little bit better. So uh, uh, no, by no means did we come out with a sweep that weekend. I um, thought we played well. I thought we played, you know, as a team. But um, on, the, on the stat sheet, we did not sweep. So can't really call it that. They're similar. You the last four games on the road, points-wise, you're 500. But do you think the team got more out of those four games than a 500 record? Yeah. Um, like I said earlier, I think, um, you know, the way that we played, we played well enough to win all four of those games. And, um, you know, sometimes stuff happens and uh, you, you don't get the win. And um, I think we've been playing some really good hockey. And I know a lot of guys in the locker room are feeling the same way. And um, we just got to stick with it. And I think we, uh, we'll see some big changes coming if we keep playing the way we have been. I don't think you've participated in a shootout. And I'm just kind of wondering, Get the past results if you might not start and get a crack at it? I've, I've been throwing my hat in the ring, um, but I think there's about 23 other guys on this team that, that might be a little bit better than me. So uh, I'll let them do the shootouts from now on. They're all for, they're, they're all for so are you. I think my time might be coming here soon. If, uh, but I hope we, we don't go to any more shootouts if, if I had to choose. So. Is that maybe where you miss like uh, Nyes and Cooley the most? Just because your coach said you never got to a shootout last year. Those guys would just take care of it. Yeah, they uh, definitely helped in that department. Um, but ho hopefully in the next um, six games that we got here, we don't bring any to a shootout. We just end them in regulation. Thanks, Carl. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. We'll have, that's it for men. Uh, we'll have.